Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back into this video. Uh, this, this one, we're continuing the series on which vehicle is best to live in for full timing. And today we're going to look at minivans. Uh, now, I've lived in two minivans, actually. Uh, my first, uh, back in the year 2000, went through a unexpected divorce and ended up moving into my 1974 Volkswagen bus. Now, that was a cool thing, cool van. Uh, it, it was showing its age and needing some maintenance at the time but it still was cool i loved it it was a passenger van it was not like the westy or anything and and you know so it was not set up for camping out of um i made i like i did like turn i ended up turning the middle seat sideways and that opened up some floor space that was nice um but in and then now today now i'm living in a uh you know 2003 uh chrysler town and country they each had their advantages, you know. Uh, there were there were definitely things about the VW that were cool. Uh, no way, you know. That was that was just cool vans. I loved them. Uh, I would not rule out if the circumstances were right doing doing a VW van again. Good thing. So, so the good things about minivans, uh, you know, you're usually going to get decent fuel efficiency. There's some exceptions to that. There are some that get surprisingly poor mileage, but uh, you know, in in my old VW, I used to average about 20 miles a gallon, and I think it was old, uh, and a 70s vintage vehicle. Uh, this town and country I'm in now, I run between 25 and 28 on the highway or on open roads, so pretty decent for a, you know, for a, for a good sized vehicle. Um, so that that could be definitely going to be better than you're going to get out of a most of the most minivans are definitely going to be better than your mileage that you'll get out of a full-size van or an SUV or a truck so or an RV for sure uh, stealth in a minivan can be great as long as you keep the outside kind of stock um, I've done it plenty and you know it's just a it doesn't look you no know, there's no connotation about it it looks like somebody's living in it as long as you keep it looking stock so you tint the windows put in blackout curtains you know i had a center console on this one and it went because it made it hard to get back and forth so you know you can you pull into somewhere in park you just slip right around into the back put up your curtain in between the front and the back and you know you're you're, you're totally discreet um so definitely so if you're doing stealth a lot uh, camping a lot a minivan is something to think about if you want to lay low and keep a low profile because you can do it just without attracting attention to yourself as far as comfort is more space than a car uh probably similar space to an suv uh, but i do find the minivans easier to get in and out of the back than suvs uh just because of the design um, you do have room in a minivan to make a comfortable bed uh, probably a narrow bed if you want to do anything else back there this put like the town and country i'm in for example i got about seven feet from the back of the seats to the back door and i've got 48 or 49 inches in width so you're not putting in a very big bed if you want to be able to do anything else um you know so in this case you know i got a six foot bed which leaves me a foot for storage behind it and i've got 21 inches wide and so that leaves that i had put in a 12 inch kitchen counter and that's just pretty much wraps it up you know that, that that's what i got for space so you just gotta um if you can get by with a smaller bed or narrow bed you, you can do all right in a minivan i personally would not want to do a minivan with two people um yeah, that's kind of a weekend thing i would figure um because you time you got a bed big enough for two in a minivan that is the entire back of the van so that just wouldn't uh, land for me but for a single person who's a minimalist a minivan can be a great option as far as the bad things of minivans the limited space is a problem uh, potentially if you're not a minimalist you, the limited space will drive you crazy because there's just only so much you can do in, in, a, in 28 square feet or 25 or 30 square feet whatever you happen to have in your van on a related note to storage you only got just so much room to store things by the time you put in your bed and a counter maybe and and whatever you need room to move around you only got just so much space that left over for storage so storage can be a challenge as well ground clearance in minivans is probably my number one beef with it uh it's, it's it can be better than in some passenger cars not necessarily and some are going to be a little higher than others but 
the ground clearance is a problem on a lot of Forest Service and BLM roads that are poorly maintained. Uh, they get graded once a year, maybe, or something. So you, and you're low to the ground, you got ruts and rocks and things. So that can definitely be a concern, uh, depending on where you're planning on driving. And the low height in the back um, would be a problem for some people and maybe not for others. It's going to be similar to being in an SUV or something. Um, like I got in the back of this van, my bed is 12 inches high off the floor. And, you know, I still will hit my head when I sit in it in the back. So, I mean, it's not terrible. So I like I can sit back there to cook or something uh, to get dressed. But as far as sitting there long term, I can't really sit up all the way straight. So it's kind of annoying that way. So, um, you know, if you want to be able to sit up straight and comfortably, you're going to want to look for a minivan with a little more height. And as far as standing up, yeah, I don't even know if there's a, even with a high top, I don't think you'd be able to stand up all the way in a minivan. Uh, at least I've, I've seen a few high top conversions, and, and uh, I think I've only seen one, and that was on a VW that actually raised it high enough to stand in. Uh, so otherwise, the, the height could be an issue for, for a lot of people. Um, and the, the combination of the height and the ground clearance are the two reasons I'm going to be looking for something a little bigger, hopefully, with my next vehicle, because I, uh, I have a really messed up back so not being able to stand up in the vehicle is a problem for me sometimes and also uh you know i want a little more ground clearance because that's a problem in a lot of the places i like to go so recommendations on minivans you know there's the whole uh domestic import dispute debate that goes on with most vehicles you know the import vans tend to have a pretty good reputation some of the american minivans not so much the astros are really popular but not making them anymore uh the town and country I'm in, you know, all the Chrysler minivans, as far as I'm aware, at least most of them have reputations with transmissions. This one's on a second transmission now. Uh, you know, so that's something to think about. If, you, if you're looking at minivans, you know, do your homework on the reliability of them because they're not all built equal. And if, if it is something that has known issues with your vehicle you're looking at, you know, see if it's already... If it's, if it's, if you, got, you have maintenance records available to show that it's already been addressed and, and the problem has been fixed already. Uh, you also will probably want to consider the size and design. You know, get some measurements front to back and side to side. Make sure you're going to be able to fit because they're, even though they may look similar outside in size, even a few inches can make a big difference in terms of what you're going to be able to do in the back of the van. Uh, so make sure you're going to be able to fit your bed in or whatever you need to do. And But... In a nutshell, you know, minivans can be a great option for a minimalist who's traveling with Solo. I, ju I personally would not even consider a minivan for two people. Um, it, it's just, it would be crazy, in my opinion. Um, and you got to be a minimalist, really. I mean, I got a solar panel on the roof, so I, I don't have room for storage on the roof. It would knock down my gas mileage if I did anyways. I could, I suppose, put a cargo thing on the back, but that's going to affect my, uh, when I get off-road, the back end's already low, and then if I put extended out more, um, yeah, I may have problems with desert washes and stuff that I have to go through sometimes. So I don't really want to get into that stuff. So that kind of, you know, leaves me limited options uh, in terms of, storage what i can carry is what fits inside so you so you kind of want to be a minimalist probably if you're if you're going with a minivan route but if you are and and if you travel solo it can be a great way to get a low profile vehicle that's great for stealth and it gets good gas mileage it's easy to drive and you know so it's definitely definitely one of what i would say is one of the top considerations for a, a solo traveler um is any kind of minivan just uh, you know just look at the reliability ratings before you before you decide on a particular model and, and measure it out see how it's going to fit for you um, but I, that's what I'm in now and it definitely is a good way to go for uh, you know like I said the two things for me uh, ground clearance is a concern on some of the places I try to go and I'd like a little more headroom um, to be able to stand up but but all in all it, it's a great been a great option for me uh, so something to think about. Hope these uh, details help you out if you're considering a minivan or trying to decide between, you know, different vans or whatever. Meanwhile, in our next video, uh, we're going to move in and look at uh, full-size vans. So I hope you join me for that. Uh, links in the play to the playlist are in the description so you can follow along. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, you may want to hit subscribe now and 
and then hit that little bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. You don't miss any of this series. Uh, this whole is about be about a dozen different categories of vehicles we're going to look at in this series. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video when we talk about full-size vans.